Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to be doing a deep dive into textures. Textures are hard, but by the end of this video, they will not feel so hard anymore. You'll feel comfortable thinking about textures, breaking them down. And of course, I'll be showing you how I produce a huge range of textures across a number of different subjects. The idea here is to create a little texture mood board. You can actually download this texture mood board to print off from my website if you would like. Um, and from that texture mood board, we have a risk-free way of practicing, um, a risk-free way of looking at our scenes and something we can take on board for our future practice, for our future style as we develop as artists. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start sketching, drawing, painting some fun textures. Our first step on our journey of discovering textures is gonna be starting at the top, starting with rooftops. So I'm just gonna write in my little text board, rooftops. This isn't about creating full scenes, this is about exploring textures and developing. So we're just trying to get little snippets of these textures to see what happens. Now I'm gonna start with the one that interests me the most, that slate roof in the top right hand corner, um, which I've written age next to because it implies to me rather an old roof. And the idea here is lots of irregular squares. Now if I was to just give this roof a top so we can work out how we're suggesting rather than detailing every bit, because we could, we could go around, we could detail every bit, couldn't we? But instead I prefer to work out what's a good way of just suggesting a few of these. Now, a key element of this texture is that some of these slates are much bigger than others. So we've got a big one here, small one, Maybe a key part of this is going to be getting that, like they're not quite neatly overlapped either. So we get these little ones just overlapping the big one. We get some big ones which are basically sat on top as whole squares. We get little gaps filled here. And something like that is probably my texture. And you could keep building it up. Uh, but I think that will be my way of expanding on this texture just going to take a closer look though with that said so a closer look shows us that part of this texture is about the the shadows the the darker areas so we're using my bolder fine liner now i can come back and i can go look where are these shadows so sometimes they're underneath the front sometimes they're running up the sides here and actually that is definitely a really key part of our texture so just having a little play a little look and we can observe our way to an interesting way of getting the texture of that roof. Now you might prefer a much more built up texture than that, that's fine, so keep going. For me that's probably more than enough. Now I'm going to get my watercolours out at the end but for now I'm going to move on to another interesting texture. So the next one I'm going to contrast this one with that one in the middle, those really fine tiles. And this time, well we could draw the top of our roof here again. This time it's almost like, it's more important to get that feel of horizontal lines to me. Just little horizontal lines coming across and then they have these tiny little vertical bits which are just showing that there's tiny tiles. So for me, I think that's the key part of this texture. Now what I'll say is just like colours, a lot of us will see different things, we'll, we'll have different opinions on what's really there and what's not, um, or what's important and what's not, or you know, it might be because you lived in a house with a roof like this and there was just something which always caught your eye and that's how you want to portray your texture and that's fine so again i'm seeing my way so you can see your way as well and again just getting that bolder line out again means i can perhaps just show some of the texture through the shadow some of these um tiles are much darker than others so i can just provide a few little dark tiles some of the horizontal lines are much more shadowed deep than others so again just a few extra lines again for me that texture is working well now let's move on let's do another really interesting one this time we'll do the the hatched roof the one on the left so now what we've got is coming towards us we've got these kind of zigzag patterns so we've got the kind of bigger texture remember this is basically doing a contour so we need to Remember that texture is being brought into our contour drawing as well. Got these zigzag patterns coming forward. 
and then we've got the shadowed area of the zigzag if you like something like that something like this as well but that's only half the story isn't it because or it may not even be half the story the key part is all these basically bits of hatching coming at us aren't they so we've just got these very fine lines of hatching and this might be where you discover that actually maybe this line that I've done maybe this is a mistake maybe if I did this again I wouldn't do this line I would hatch and stop the hatching because the line is actually getting in the way of this feeling like bits of straw and um, so there you go. maybe that is a mistake maybe that's something I've learned from doing this texture board but I'm going to proceed anyway to see what else I learn I can always change it next time and I'll, I'll have this not perfect version to sort of refer back to so again I'm not going to do the hatching everywhere but another key bit is that we've got these end bits are dark and they're just showing the, uh, the sort of well then the ends the, the very nibs the very tips of the straw so or the thatch I suppose I should call it so this is where perhaps this pointillism we were talking about in in the beginning that's where this can come in so you can see already we've used hatching we have used naturalistic hatching we've used basically just linear hatching we use pointillism and so we're building up not just a feeling of texture but also this feeling of shadow at the same time just a few really simple simple ink marks now last but not least let's do this funny wooden uh, texture on the top left now this is very regimented isn't it unlike all the others this is very regimented so how are we going to get that in a suggestive manner well for me that's going to be about probably drawing more of the shapes but just leaving out some part of the shape so here we can just sort of go yet yeah, that shape continues but I don't have to complete it I don't want to overwhelm my page with ink but I can just show that there is a really regular pattern coming along and this is something else which will come into sort of modern brick walls and uh, modern fences is the idea of having this regular pattern but not fully explaining it again we might want to look at some of the internal textures so we've got just these sort of little bits of grain going on little knots as well so just having some simple hatching with some areas a bit darker than others and then although it is mostly very regular there is irregularities in shadow so perhaps this is where we just go look a few darker areas and that really starts to suggest those dips and dives in our texture and there we go we've got four very different textures exploring our tools as much as the sort of scene in front of us I said we'd pop out the watercolors because you can just you could use this just to work out the kind of colors as well if you wanted so i might go look we've got these lovely slate grays so i've got my indigo and if i just put the indigo down how does that compare but it's actually not a bad comparison is it but it's probably a bit a bit too sort of blue so maybe a little bit of that indigo and I'll just neutralize it down with some quinacridone sienna we end up a little bit closer to gray so maybe that that's a nice color to use so I could then take the color I've mixed a bit of indigo a little bit of quinacridone and I could work out how this is going to apply texture to my my ink textures again if you've printed off um, the, the mood board and you've not done it on a uh, bit of watercolor paper just take real care uh, with this stage you don't want to damage uh, damage your um, your paper too much and lose your lovely textures and also my I know that printer ink isn't waterproof so I'm just staying away from those edges but there you go you can see just with a few little bits of this kind of varied indigo quinacridone sienna we've built up that texture to be a little bit of something else now we've got this much more complex texture but it's got the same colors so we'll mix the same color again i'm just going to try a simple wash but in this simple wash we're going to focus on the bigger picture we've got all these tiny textures but if you look at it it goes from deep sort of indigo almost at the top left and then towards the front there's just a few little touches of that color and then as it comes across to the right perhaps we can see it's a little bit sort of grayer a little bit uh, 
sort of less value. So just playing with how we're applying that wash to this texture and we get something interesting. Moving along, we have our lovely sort of straw colour. So maybe we try a couple of things. I've got some quinacridone, this is quinacridone deep gold. This is quinacridone sienna. Uh, maybe a little bit of Hansa yellow. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So we've got three options there and we can of course mix them. So what about Hansa yellow with quinacridone sienna? I think that might end up being a nice sort of straw like colour. We can just bring that down again. And then we could take a little bit of something I know to be very granulating. So I've got a little bit of lunar earth. And if I just pop that in into these ends, that natural granulation, as well as this being a deeper colour, implying a bit of shadow, that natural granulation will imply lots of dots. So now I've used not just the colour, not just the ink, but also the natural pigment being very granulated to come up with another way of showing my texture. And then last but not least, let's just do a little bit of gentle wash again here. We've got a really neat structure. So we start off being quite neat with our colours and maybe just enriching it with a little bit of variation. So that's Lunar Earth and then a touch of Crackdown uh, Gold Deep <laughs> to enrich it, bring it a little bit more forward, a little bit more happy. And here you go, that's my little rooftop textures. Next up in our little journey is walls. So walls obviously very common in urban sketching. And let's have a little think in these little four boxes about how we can capture them. Now I'm going to start with this sort of broken wall at the bottom because that lets us kind of look at a couple of different textures. So we've got this kind of concrete line coming across, which is a little bit kind of scraggly, isn't it? looping it's got fractures in it so that's us thinking about our contour within this area we've got bricks but we've also got again more of this kind of scraggly concrete so i'm going to just suggest that by using a little bit of hatching that hatching isn't the actual texture of the concrete uh, or the plaster actually i suppose it is but what it is is it's a suggestion of the roughness so you could actually then do the same thing in this just to show these little dots of the cracks but also these little lines which are showing it's the same kind of thing as this then within we've got bricks so the bricks are actually quite neat so we could take a suggestive approach and draw in a few what i find really helpful when we have surfaces meeting though this is another interesting point to consider is that actually having a lot of the textures at that meeting point really, I think, helps explain what's going on. So actually coming along where these meet and showing that we've got overlapping and underlapping bricks, same down here, same here, we can just show that these textures are interacting with each other. So they're not just sort of the same thing. No, we have bricks and then we have something sort of on top or covering them. We can tell on top or covering them because we have this line coming off and cutting lots of these bricks in half the same down here the same here so that's my little sort of scraggly concrete wall now let's try this ruin this is another fun one so here we'll, we'll actually draw a little bit of the contour at the top because what we have is it's both rough but then also got little steps so it's both got this kind of broken area but also it's got little sort of steps where the bricks are still uh, there, but they've, they've got broken. They're not sort of fallen apart, but instead just some bricks have fallen off. Then under that, we have lots of little bricks. So let's just do our little bricks first. Lots and lots of these little bricks. And they're actually reasonably neat, but they're not entirely. So we need to change the shape of a few of them. Again, it's quite good when you change the shape. If you have little and big next to each other, you can tell that there are lots of different shapes in there. It's not just us making a mistake, for example. We have a little big next to each other. We have just a few little lines, suggesting little shadows. We also have a couple of missing bricks. So we have these little areas of just dark. That is part of the texture as well. So we can just get the little areas of dark. 
And actually that one's really quick because we just started with a simple contour. We identified the key features. We can get it in really, really quickly. Let's go to the left side. We've got this kind of, looks like a dry stone wall made out of something like sandstone. So again, let's just imagine we can see the top. So we can get in the contour. The contour here has these little steps in it between the bricks. And these bricks are actually quite even in their, their thickness. So we can start by getting this kind of these horizontal lines, which is a key part of this kind of this wall, these horizontal lines, we start by getting those in. And then we can come back and find the other bits of this texture, which are the variably length. So they've got the same kind of height, these horizontal lines, but they've got variable lengths. And they've also got variable shadow from there, the way they're not quite fitting together perfectly. So we can come again, part of our texture is gonna be getting a suggestion of that shadow in. And there we go, another quite simply done texture, but one for me that works quite well. Now we've got this one on the, on the right, which is this kind of stippled wall. And how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm actually gonna, we'll, we're gonna expand it to the bottom this time, because we can, we can look at lots of different textures. So if we go first to the bottom of this wall um, and we've got the little gentle like stippled wall, we can just get that effect by not doing a continuous line. Then we've got this concrete, but the concrete actually at the bottom, we've got again a contour which isn't made by the concrete at all, it's made by the grass. Then above we've got a neat element, we've got this window which has got very much a smooth outline because it's made of something different. We might as well put, let's just put both these windows in. And in places we can get that stippled effect where actually on this side, we do, we do see the wall. We do see the wall overlapping. On this side, we actually see more of a window frame. So this is where textures are really coming into our contours. Now here is where we can use, again, just our stippling, little stippled effect in those darker areas. We've got darkness coming underneath here, darkness under here, but also in a few random places. So otherwise our wall's just blank, but now we've got this simply textured wall. Now I'm not fully liking how this edge has come out. It's not clear to me. So I'm gonna come in with a finer fine liner and then I can join up this stippled effect. It's still gonna be rough, but hopefully it's gonna more clearly show what's going on in the bottom here. And later we'll have a look at how we might do some textures of the window. But just suffice to say for now, simple hatching, and we'll look at this in more detail, but simple hatching can imply both darkness, but it can also imply reflections and things like that. So maybe just experiment now with that. And one of our little lessons certainly is about doing those textures, those textures of reflections and water. So here I'm going to put textures of wall, which I should have done at the sh beginning, shouldn't I? So I've got my angled brush. We'll have a look at the kind of colours we've been using. So there are reds in there. So we could start with just popping our primary red in. But that is very red, more like a bright red apple, isn't it? So I've actually got a colour called Mayan Orange here, which I think might be perfect. So we'll, we'll have a little look at that alongside as well. And that is much better. And also it's got texture. You might be able to tell, you might not quite but this has got a little bit of granulating texture. Equally, maybe we could just try, we've got our red, try a little bit of quinacridone gold into our, into our normal primary red and see what that produces. And that's another, they're all subtle changes, aren't they? But subtle changes is what we're after. And you can see, so we've experimented with different reds, a bit of yellow, gold in there. So let's try these colors on our bricks. So we don't want to colour the whole area, but we could start by just doing a light little wash in a few places and then just vary that a touch, a bit more red, see, just to make it richer and to show this isn't a uniform colour at all, it's not a uniform texture. Instead, it's got variation in there. Now, because this is very light, it's going to dry rather quickly, but in a bigger picture, we'd have to wait a while before we could risk coming back on top with more colour. So here I'm gonna actually try a little bit of quinacridone sienna, this nice warm orange color, to come over the top of some of these bricks to show again that they are nice and varied. 
and just like that, maybe even in a couple of places, we can get just a darker feel by touching a little bit of indigo on top. That will kind of muddy up that red and make it just feel again more varied, more interesting. Our concrete needs a more gentle touch. So if I just come along here again, we can just try out a really soft bit of this same grey. So quinacridone, sienna and indigo, a dark blue and a, and a warm brown. And that we can just use in a few places to again show that this isn't nothing here. It's far from nothing. It's another interesting texture which is different from these bricks. And we can tell it's different because we've inked it differently and now we've painted it differently. Moving along, let's try this. This is a lovely warm warm wall isn't it so i might even just come jump in straight with some quinacridone gold again a loose textured wash this time let's try painting a lot more of the wall but look it's still important to leave these gaps then we can come back in with deeper colors so this time again a little bit of quinacridone sienna with a tiny bit of indigo in and now we can create texture through wet on wet painting so this wet on wet gives that variation all over the scene. Moving on, we've got our lovely grey. So again, we can just, it's, it's all very simple. So we can mix these same colours over and over again. Got again my Cronacridone Sienna, a little bit of indigo, creating this kind of warm grey. And we can come in and just touch that in, in a few places. Now that's probably not got quite enough blue in it for me. So no problem, we'll grab a little bit more indigo touch that in. Again, paying attention at the brush strokes, paying attention to these horizontal marks, the horizontal feel of this scene. Now I'm going to dry, clean my brush, dry it off, and I can actually just bring a lot more of that colour over, but whilst keeping that textured variation. So look, we've still got white, deep and light colours. A little bit of indigo we could drop in in a few places. Look, that will increase the texture again, the texture through this varied wash. Last but not least, we've got our stippled wall. Um, so I'm going to just try this with wet on wet. So the wet on wet will let the colours paint themselves. And it's a nice bright orange. So I'm going to go a little bit of uh, Hansi yellow with a little bit of quinacridone gold to give us that kind of orangey set of colours. And here, look, we'll just drop it in. And because we're dropping it in on water, it's going to move around, it's going to flow, it's going to cauliflower spider web out. And I actually think just doing that is enough to create that texture because we have this paper, our watercolour paper, which is textured. Well, look, we're just celebrating that material and allowing that to shine through. If we wanted to be fancy, we could use a granulating colour, a little bit of lunar earth down here, even go really bold. A little bit of lunar black in some of the shadows would provide even more texture. But we need to be careful not to overdo it and also celebrate the simplicity of what we're doing. And just like that, we've almost completed our house, haven't we? We've got the, the, the roofs, we've got the walls, and we can move on in the next lesson to actually having a look at the floors, the, the gravel, the roads, and all of that. So now we're on to the next step of our journey. The next step of our journey, of course, being on the floor. So we have our roads and floors, I guess is probably the best way to put it and ground there you go that's the word I, I was after now I'm going to start with one of the really fun ones these cobbles so if we look at the bottom image in the middle we've got this cobbled street something like an old French or old English town and the similar one as well on the right hand side um, you can get that feel immediately just from looking at the floor can't see anything else but you feel like you know the place and that's why these textures are so important and how are we going to achieve it well look what have we got we've got lots of horizontal lines but they're wiggling they're not straight we've got lots of big black areas and fading off into the distance we've got less obvious texture so I'm going to start there and just get a really faint suggestion of these lines and it's the horizontal lines which are more continuous just like we had here on this roof. The feel is really of these horizontal lines. It's just there's some, some joining vertical lines. So I'm going to start with the key element of this texture, the bit which tells us a lot about what's going on. And then I'm going to start, especially as we get closer, I'm going to start building in a few more of these verticals. 
and at the moment this is actually probably enough for a lot of sketches if we have lots of buildings at the side if there's lots going on maybe we don't even need more than that but for a zoomed in texture let's see what we can add without going too far so we mentioned lots of bold shadows so we can just use a bolder line now and we could even add in let's just add in the edge here of the pavement because that tells us a bit about what's going on as well doesn't it? it tells us a lot more about the perspective so we can just add that in and then we can give this edge of the pavement a shadow and that kind of encloses the whole image doesn't it now i've not done the reflected water but we're going to be doing reflections later so don't worry about that you'll have ideas well you'll have my ideas and soon you'll have your own ideas for how to achieve reflections as well just going to continue getting these kind of random feeling vertical connections going as well whilst also trying to remember there's a bit of perspective going on so a lot of textures we need to remember it's not just a texture it's also telling us about the angle of the street so as we're looking this line these vertical lines will be more and more skewed to the side you can imagine a vanishing point up here um, and there we go and that that now is probably enough even for a, for me for a fairly detailed sketch and we can see in a minute of course what we do with some colors now next let's touch on grass grass is a really lovely texture it tells us a lot again you know immediately you see grass you know you're in a well a green area aren't you if if that's a park if it's a a farm you know could be all sorts but grass is a really key texture one key part of it we've covered it in some of our thinking like here we've covered the idea of grass actually forming a contour so it's often useful if we take our grassy field on the left it's often useful to actually have that that contour in where the grass ends because now you can immediately show just these little blades of grass forming that contoured edge then as you come forward you get waves you get these sort of waves and tufts of grass forming little bits of shadow and coming closer and closer you get bigger more evident sort of uh, blades of grass it becomes less about the overall texture of this kind of shadowy wave coming towards you it becomes more about the individual texture of the grass blade so you might even at the front then just have peeking into your vision some really big blades of grass and this is going to depend on the exact kind of field so in our reference you don't really have these do you you just have more and more big shadows coming forward and again for me grass is something to do rather simply make it underdone rather over rather than overdone we can celebrate a lot of the grass when we add our watercolors as well so with that let's move on and let's move to this this scene which has got lots of gravel so somewhere in a kind of deserty areas that's what it feels like to me so here what we've got is a road so we'll we'll start by getting that road in we can almost use that road as a kind of contour and that road the contour is formed by loose touches of gravel so if we just find those contours we can use that contour again just to really start off our texture it gives a framework for our texture so it's not just sort of unexplained little marks of ink it's actually got more to it in the middle we've got a sort of deeper darker area so remember we talked about using naturalistic hatching to to give you that darkness well look this is another place we can do it getting the depth the darkness and then going off to the sides they're also darker so they need a little bit more of our naturalistic hatching and all i'm doing is these little rock like marks as we're closer we want bigger marks in the distance almost just get away with little dots can't we this kind of pointillism effect again and then perhaps to just get a little bit more of those definite shadows we come back with a bigger pen and we find some of these little rocks we really show that actually maybe they're not so little maybe they're casting a really significant shadow and just like that again hopefully you're agreeing that we've got a lovely lovely bit of texture we could even you know use non-representative textures we can just do look if we just scratch our pen over the surface 
So I'm being very gentle, so I'm not forming a continuous line here. The hatching is broken up by the texture of the paper. And again, that's just a way of building up using our medium, the fact I've got rough paper and a fine pen, using our medium to build up a texture which is sort of semi-representative. So it's telling us a bit about the scene, but it's not overdoing it. And what are we gonna do for the last one? Well, let's take a more modern street, perhaps the image on the left at the top, where we have basically smooth tarmac. So what can we do here? Well, the tarmac, let's have a look at it. Really, it's just got very fine lines, hasn't it? So, well, fine lines, fine dots, sorry. So it's almost, needs nothing at all. But it's also quite dark. So it's another one where perhaps we could use a little bit of hatching just over the whole area. And that's just going to increase the value, increase the darkness. And we instantly recognise tarmac for that. Being very gentle though, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want the tarmac to take over. And again, maybe we want to do a bit more if we're doing it so zoomed in. So just a few more extra little dots and things. You could do loads. If this was a study of the tarmac, you could really go for it. You could fill it up, really analysing, you know, what's the pattern of all the little breaks in the tarmac? Because it's actually not smooth. It looks smooth from a distance. You get close. Like the photo here, you can tell it's got bumps and bumps. And again, I'm going to actually suggest, for me, this is enough. And we can celebrate a lot about this with our watercolours. And perhaps that's a feature for me of... Um, doing ground is that the watercolours are more important because they provide a smoother, more general feel. And very rarely are we actually doing a sketch and making it about the ground. So sketches might be about the walls and the roofs, in which case our colours become quite specific and important in generating that feel. But more often, the ground is just there to enhance the things around it, not overtake the things around it. But let's have a look, let's have a think about what we can do. So here we've got another feel of just bluey grey, haven't we? So we could use our same little mix, indigo and quinacridone sienna. So if I mix those two together, I end up just coming down with like a neutral feeling uh, colour, somewhere towards a nice grey, but perhaps with a little bit more blue in this image. Equally, you could, you know, add in some texture here. These are all about extra bits of texture. So maybe we just want to try something like our, our lunar black. So my lunar black will add an enormous amount of texture. So I'm going to start actually this time. We've not really used the lunar black in, in that way. So I'm going to start by doing just that. And what we need to pay attention to on black floors is that actually a lot of it is reflecting a lot of light. A lot of it is counterintuitively rather bright and rather than being truly black. It's more about capturing that light and that reflection. So we get the, the shadows and then we soften into these edges. So instead of having this hard shadow, we have this idea again of a little bit of reflection, a little bit of light, rather than just thinking, you know, this is all one flat gray wash. And then maybe on top of that, we can start exploring those bluer tones in places. So a little bit of indigo, just to highlight that some of these, even in the middle, some of these, I want to call them tiles, bricks, cobbles, whatever we want to call them, some of them are a little bluer. Maybe some of them are a little more warm, a little brown or neutral. So just touching in these little extra bits of colour can enhance that texture whilst the watercolours themselves, being wet on wet, will provide a lot of texture as well. Now the grass, what I love for the grass, I've just given it away really, haven't I, with the wet on wet. So I love just coming in, it's a smooth, flowing, natural thing, just taking a nice green. So here I'll use a bright green gold, and that will just provide that flowing feel. If we want to enhance that even more, well, we could take a deeper green or we could add a little bit of brown to our green to, to make it feel more punchy. And then we can enhance some of these waves. So then we get that kind of shadow feel within the grass, especially around where we've done our kind of natural hatching, those natural shapes of grass. But we also get this sense of light because the wet on wet approach allows your 
grassy or greens to flow and not be uniform. Moving on here, well, this kind of gravelly, this deserty feel is just a wonderful place to try some really granulating colours. So again, like we did up here with our Lunar Earth, we could do the same. So we could go just touch in some granulating colours, some of these more impressively granulating colours, and maybe double down on that with some Lunar Black, and just let that settle and see what happens. So I'm just going to move on, and then we'll see if there's anything to add to this once it's finished drying, or if that even that one-off little touch is enough. Last but not least, well, tarmac is another place where I might be tempted to pop down some of these granulating colours. So like this lunar earth and this lunar black. But I know not everyone will have such easy access to silly colours like that. So there's other things we can do as well. Number one, you'll find many of your colours are mildly granulating. So like my cobalt blue, which is a very common colour, is mildly granulating. A lot of ultramarines will be granulating. So you could take your ultramarine and a burnt sienna or burnt umber and do what we've been doing, mix up a neutral. So I know my indigo, my quinacridone sienna, when I mix them, that makes a neutral, much like any blue and warm brown will approximately neutralize. Um, but if you choose one of those colors as being a little bit granulating, so if I take my cobalt blue and my uh, quinacridone sienna, and I get it towards neutral, then that will be a mildly granulating colour. So that's one option. And um, the other option is just, again, to just be a little bit brave with your wet on wet painting. So we can take non-granulating colours. I'll take my indigo and I'll just use that initially and I'll just put it across sparingly and then come back in with a clean brush, slightly dried off and just soften. So now this has been not wet on wet, this has been me applying a kind of uh, wet on dry approach, but then fiddling about with it in a wet on wet manner. So fiddling about with some water. And we've got some soft effects here, and we've got these soft edges, these hard edges, lots of gentle touches. Having done that, I can come back in with my non-granulating colors again. And I can just gently touch in just see really gently we see the little blooms of texture emerging even though these colors aren't granulating they will still form to some degree texture and just means we take a more careful cautious approach to building up that texture and whilst this is still wet we're gonna not be overdoing things because whilst this is still wet we're able to have soft edges soft edges coming out now another lovely effect we can do is actually just splash. So little splashes, even just splashes of water will form a lovely texture. Might need to be a little richer there because that didn't work. So the reason it didn't work is probably because the colour wasn't rich enough so the water wasn't pushing anything out of the way. So if I just make an area richer, so you see there's a rich colour and I splash water in, now you can see, you see how it pushes out the colour, pushes out the colour and makes it, um, well, more effective essentially. It makes that colour, uh, so hopefully you can see here, it pushes out the colour, it leaves you these what we call cauliflowers, where the water is pushed away the pigment. We can of course do the opposite. So now that this is dried, maybe we can see we want more texture. So we can drop in, just through splashing, we can drop in touches of pigment. And that is another effective way of applying texture. So rather than trying to paint everything, we take an element of randomness and apply that. And this is really effective for skies, really effective for anything on the ground as well. You can do it in all of these, you see? And it applies just an extra bit of randomness. And like that, we've done our first little page, our first bit of mood board. We're not done yet though, I'm gonna keep going with a couple more examples, so stick with me. And we'll move on into the next lesson where we'll look at textures of nature, of trees, of leaves. So if you'd like to find that next lesson, don't forget to subscribe and you'll be able to find 
the next segment of this Textus class on my channel. Also, check out sketchloose.co.uk for more in-depth courses from myself. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.